We're going to have a, it's going to be a five-part series on overcoming. And it's really important to understand that when you have a five-part series, you want to commit to getting everything that God has for you. It's like reading one chapter of a book. It's great. But if you don't finish the book, you'll never get the complete idea. And, and we're going to be talking about overcoming, really overcoming uh, things that we're facing in our lives. And, and this, is, this is the reality. If you don't learn how to overcome it, you continue being overcome by it. If you don't learn how to overcome it, you continue to be overcome by it. And the majority of people that you're talking to um, in life have been overcome by things and they'll never recover if they don't learn how to overcome. And this is what happens. You become a victim to your circumstance and then you start blaming your circumstance. You start blaming people. And this is the way I am. And then you start accepting a defeated identity instead of understanding that God, Jesus came to give you a new identity. And, th and th what we're running into in this world today is we have an identity crisis and this is what we're leaning towards. We're leaning towards, we're leaning towards our weaknesses and then we're making our weaknesses and we're defining, I am my weakness. I am my sin. I am my struggle. I am depressed. I have anxiety. I have bipolar. I, I, and you just keep confessing your struggle instead of overcoming it. I am addicted. I am strung out. I am hopeless. And, and, and this is what's happening. You could remain like that or you could overcome it. And, and the great thing about overcoming whatever you're facing right now, you could help someone else overcome. You cannot help someone with something you've not overcome. You guys understand that? You receive a victory and then you give a victory. We all need to learn how to overcome. Overcome your past, overcome your hurt, overcome the abuse, overcome, overcome the hurt, overcome the depression, overcome of addiction, overcome anger, overcome unforgiveness, overcome fear, overcome anxiety. And the good thing about it, I want to let you know, you don't have to cope with it. You can overcome it. You don't have to manage it. You can overcome it. Give God some praise. Jesus did not come here to help you cope. He didn't come here to help you survive. He didn't come here to help you get through. He came here to help you overcome. Let's give God some praise that someone today is going to overcome. The power to overcome is here tonight. It's important for you to receive it and, and identify what you need to overcome. Um, next week, we're going to be cover, covering specifically how to overcome fear. Today, I'm going to talk about the, the idea of just open this, opening the subject up, overcoming through the love of God. Now, now, it's really important that you understand, and I know that sounds very generic, but what I'm saying here is, is you're going to overcome through a relationship, a loving relationship with God. It's not going to be steps. It's not going to be psychology. It's going to be relationship. You have, you have to understand this. You overcome through the power of God's love for you. And this is the idea. Most of us are struggling with an area because you have a love problem. You don't believe that anybody loves you. You don't believe that God loves you. You don't even love you. And until you get that love foundation right, you're going to be struggling for the rest of your life because you're going to ask someone to fulfill you that only, come on, fulfill me, make me whole, make me feel loved. And this is what happens when you're empty on the inside and you have a clear identity of who you are. This is what makes you desperate. We don't want you to be desperate. We want you to be satisfied. Come on. We want you to be complete. There's a way to live that way. Come on. There's a way to live like that. But if you're empty, you're going to be searching. So we're, going to be, we're talking about overcoming through the love of God. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. I'm asking you, Lord, to speak to us today. Help us understand what's being spoken. Help us to get your word in our hearts. And Lord, we just ask you for an explosion of your overcoming power today. I thank you that today's going to be the first day of somebody else, somebody's life here. They're finally going to overcome a 12-year issue, a 30-year issue, a five-year issue, a, a one-month issue. They, they feel like, I can't overcome it. And today, they're going to overcome it, Father, through your, through your love, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
take notes, get this in your, in, in your soul, understand it, believe it, and get the breakthrough. Four truths about overcoming through the love of God. We, before I get deep into the subject, I just want to let you know you're in a love war. And what I mean by that is, is there's an enemy and there's circumstances that are doing everything they can to conquer love in you. It wants to convince you that God doesn't love you. It wants to convince you that, and, they want, and then it wants to lead you to not love God. And then it wants you, and it wants to take you to a place where you can't love others. Love war. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that are in this world that are full of anger and hate, and they're out there, and they're going to pour out what they got. And if you don't watch it, you get conquered. So let's look at this for a minute. Truth number one. I'm going to give you four truths about overcoming through God's love, through the love of God. One, we can overcome anything through Jesus' love and his help. We could overcome depression, fear, addiction, anxiety, anger, demons, obstacles, trials, insecurities. We overcome through our love and relationship with Jesus. I, I have, I have a, a grandson, and, and, and I now have two grandsons, and my grandson doesn't have to worry about anything when he's with me. Because when he's with me, I protect him. When he's with me, he's hungry, I feed him. When he, he's with me, there's, there's nobody going to get to him. When he's with me, I guide him. When he's with me, I buy him toys. <laughs> what, what does all this mean? That when you have a loving father and you have a loving grandpa, when you have a loving father, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to fear anything because the one that's with you loves you. And since he loves you, he's going to take care of you. Come on, give some praise to God. You're going to overcome by knowing this, that God loves you. This scripture about overcoming, and, and we, we quote it as, as Christians a lot, but I, I don't think we focus on the love in this verse. I think we focus on we're more than conquerors. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus. But it's more than that. The scripture is saying that you're more than a conqueror through the love of the, of the love, the love that God has for you, the love that Jesus has for you. Let's look at the scripture. In Romans 8.35, it says this, who can separate us from the love of God? Can tribulation, anguish, persecution, or hunger, or nakedness, or peril, or, so or sword. All he's saying, who's going to separate me from this love? I'll go through trials. I might go through tribulations. I might have some tough times. But just because I'm going through a tough time, it does not mean that God doesn't love me. And just because I'm going through a tough time, don't mistake this, my love for God hasn't diminished. Just because Lisa and I might be going through some trials, it doesn't mean I love Lisa less. We might be going through some difficulties, but the love doesn't change. You cannot, you cannot have a strong relationship with God or anyone else if your love is based on circumstances. God loves me when I'm in a trial. God loves me when I'm on a mountaintop. God loves me when I'm weak. God loves me when I feel strong. God loves me when I'm in victory. God loves me when I just fail. But nothing's going to separate me from the love of God. Say it with me, God loves me. You got to say it over yourself. You're never going to overcome until you get this principle because your victory is going to be in your relationship, your love relationship with God. This is, what I'm saying is your victory is in your friendship with God. You guys got this? Come on, we're going to get this in our spirit. Nevertheless, someone say, nevertheless. In all these things, we overcome strongly or we're more than conquerors. Everything I'm facing right now, the tribulations, the difficulties, the affliction, the trouble, the persecution, the pain, the grief, 
extreme necessity, danger, adversity, difficulties, unplanned, unplanned accidents. Through all of that, I overcome strongly through the help of him who loves us. So how do, how do I overcome? Through the help of the one that loves me. I'm going through this, but I want you to understand I am not defeated. I might be distressed right now, but I'm not overcome. I might be in transition right now and I, in an unexpected moment. I might have had a major loss in my life, but I want you to understand in this loss, I'm going to come out on top because I'm an overcomer in every situation I'm facing. All it's saying is no one is going to separate me from my strength. Nothing is going to separate me from my power. You guys understand that? And no one's going to overcome my love for God and my love for people. I dare you. No, I'm just kidding. And there's some people that are very tempting to not love. There are some people that will get you angry, but I understand this. If you get conquered by anger, this is what does stop your love. And once your love is conquered, your overpower, come on, your overcoming power has been deleted. You guys understand? It's there, but you're canceling up. So let's keep going. Overcome means more than a conquer, to gain, surpassing, and decisive victory. So Jesus wants to help us to have overcoming and decisive victory. Someone say decisive. A unanimous decision. Yeah, you won. I love UFC. If you don't know what the UFC stands for, it's, it's um, something about fighting. <laughs> Ultimate fighting championship. That's what it is. Almost every weekend they got fights and, and I'm looking at all the fights and I know all the, I know all the fighters. Like I watch that because I'm a warrior at heart. Like by the time I'm done, I want to fight everybody. Right? I even tell the fighters what moves they should make. Like, you should have did, did an arm bar right there. You should have choked them out. Yeah, you got to keep your hand up. You... I love seeing people, I, lo I love seeing the fights because I, I love the challenge of a fight. And I love seeing people win because they, they have strategy and they know what they're doing. They're prepared for the ring. All I'm saying here is that Jesus wants you to have a decisive victory. That means when it's all said and done, they're not questioning, man, it was a close fight. God says, I don't want you to be in close fights. I want you to be, I want you to be in fights and battles that when it's all said and done, there's a decisive victory. Come on, give, give God some praise. That God's not, there's not gonna be no like decision. There's gonna be a knockout. Come on, whatever you're facing, God is saying, I'm going to help you overcome it, and it's going to be a knockout because of the love of the one that's helping me. Jesus, no one loves, it seems like no one loves me right now, but I know you do. We're good. You got to be careful that you're not focusing on who doesn't love you and forgetting who does love you. You got to stop focusing on who's not for you and start focusing on who's for you. You know what, what God says? If I'm for you, who can come against you? Come on. If I'm with you, how can you end up in defeat? Victory is in my future. The more we're convinced that God loves us, the more hope and love for God we will have. Now, I just, I want to say that again. The more convinced that you know that God loves you, the more hope and love for God you'll have. The more hope. Now, when you know that God loves you, this is what you do know, that he's going to work everything out for your favor. The word love means kindness because I know... Kindness, grace, friendship, help, favor, goodwill, benevolence, a desire to do good. I, I want you to understand this. Love, another word for love is benevolence. And the word benevolence means a strong, strong desire to do good for you. A desire to give you the best. 
We got to get rid of a poverty mentality that makes you live off leftovers. When God wants to give you his best because he loves you. Come on. If he loves you, he's going to give you his best. Come on, get that in your mind. God wants to give me his best. Heaven is, come on, heaven's not going to have leftovers. Heaven's going to be full of the best. Say this, me too. All I'm saying is, stop being jealous. God says, my love is for you too. Look, look what it says right here in Romans 8, 20. It says, and we know, and we what? With great confidence, I love this, that God, who is deeply concerned about us, I know, I'm completely convinced that God, who is deeply concerned about me, about us, causes all things. What does he do? Causes all things. I know you're going through a tough time. You say, how can this work out for good? He says, just trust in my love. I'm going to cause it to work in your favor. Causes all things. Causes all things. Someone say all things. What I'm going through too, all things. The trial I'm facing, all things. The failure, the, the, my failure, all things. Everything that I'm going through, because God loves me, he's going to cause it to work out for my good. The devil wants to count me out, and God's already said, this fight is fixed. It's going to work out for good. I don't know how it's going to work out for good, but that's none of my business. That's his job. Some of us are anxious and you're stressed out because you're trying to do God's part. Your job is just to know and believe. Some say, I just know God loves me. He's deeply concerned about me, and he's going to work this out for good. If you got some praise, come on, yes, stop right there. He's working it out. Cause all things to work together as a plan. Someone say a plan. God has a plan for good. What's, this, what's God's plan for you? Good. For those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. You love God. He loves you. Everything's going to work out fine. I'm trusting in the love of God. God loves me. My wife don't have to worry about getting evil for me. I love her. She, she, she gets good. A matter of fact, my wife gets just, she just says she wants something, and I'm like, no, and then all of a sudden she gets it. <laughs> How many understand that? Because when you love someone, it's hard to hold back your blessing. My little grandson, I'm telling you, every, he always wants to go to the store. And I already know why he wants to go to the store, because he wants a new toy. And what am I going to do when he finds the toy in the aisle? And he's enjoying it. Oh, God, pa, pa, look, pa, pa. And then he starts saying, I, I'm Thor. Who are you? I go, I'm Hulk smash. All I'm saying, we serve a God that loves you. Come on. And he wants to help you. He's not there being critical about you. He loves you and he wants to give you his best. Amen. Truth number two. The only way to complete, be complete and full of over, the overcoming power of God is by experiencing the love of Christ. The only way to be complete as a person and experience the full overcoming power of God is to experience the love of Christ. All I'm saying here is, if you don't have the love of Christ, you're not complete. I'm not, I'm not talking about religion. What I'm saying is, if you don't have the love of Christ in you, you were created with an empty part of your life that you could try to fill with men, women, a sex change, drugs, material possessions, but none of that stuff will ever make you complete. And none of it is going to help you overcome your depression. This is the war that we're having today. People aren't happy and they're thinking, if I do this and I do that and I hook up with them, or maybe I'm homosexual and maybe I'm not, maybe I'm trans, 
Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm a man. Maybe I'm a woman. And you're, this, is a, this is a problem. Inside of you, you're empty. And this is what you're saying. I don't know. I'm not comfortable with my skin. Because we don't know about God and we don't know the Bible. We just tell them, if you're not comfortable, just go with your discomfort. Do whatever you think is going to make you whole and every, help you overcome your emptiness and your depression. I wanted you to understand this. We're all messed up and every single one of us are looking to be complete. You're looking to be full, but you'll never be complete or full with money, things, houses, cars, relationships, sex. The only thing, one, that'll make you complete is Jesus' love. And there's a void that unless you open up your heart and receive that love, you're not complete. I just need a new husband. He, he don't love me. Ephesians 3.19. Look what it says. May you experience the love of Christ. It's a prayer. I pray this tonight. May you experience the love of Christ. I'm telling you, if you experience the love of Christ, it's going to drive the alcoholism out of you. It's going to drive the depression out of you. It's going to drive the fear out of you. It's going to drive the anger out of you. It's going to drive the hopelessness out of you. It's going to drive a suicidal spirit out of you. It's going to drive the pimp out of you. The hoochie out of you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Pastor, why'd you go there? Because somebody's a hoochie. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Calm down. Come on, how are you going to overcome that hoochie? I'm just kidding. <laughs> how, how are you going to overcome your hustle? How are you going to overcome your depression? Do you know how to fix you? Or are you going to start self-medicating? And that's why some of us, you're so heartbroken because your boyfriend left you. He was an abuser. He didn't appreciate you. And you're all heartbroken. And the reason you're heartbroken because you were looking for your completeness in him. And you're thinking, the only one that can make me whole is gone. You're lying to yourself. Ephesians 3, 19, may you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully. He goes, man, this love is so great, man. You can't even totally understand, but I pray that you understand a little bit of it. Because if you did, then you will. Because when you experience the love of Christ, then you will be made complete. When you experience, this is why 15,000 people showed up to our churches this last weekend. Because the majority of them have experienced the love of Christ. And the love of Christ made them complete where the drug couldn't make it complete. Come on, the relationship didn't make it complete. Come on, the money didn't make it complete. But there was a Jesus and they experienced the love of God and that made them whole. <laughs> then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Wow. This is the idea. When you experience the love of Christ, that you know God loves you and that love of God is just flowing through you, in you, around you, you're going to be made complete. The word complete means make, to make full, to be filled to the top, so that nothing is lacking, to make complete, to be fulfilled and satisfied. I mean, the Rolling Stones sang that song, I can't get no Satisfaction. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know if that's the right song. That was another song I said. I know I'm, I don't know the song, but it was a people leave us tears alone. That was a, all I'm saying is they knew after making the money, getting the fame, sleeping with different women every night doing whatever they could do, at the end, they sang an anthem, I can't get satisfaction. Is that your song? And you're thinking, right now, I know what I need to do. And I'm telling you, if it's not Jesus' love, you're wrong. If they just treated me better, I'll be complete. No, you won't. No, you won't. No, you won't. If this happened, I'll be, no, you won't. No, you won't. Complete, fullness. Someone say fullness. 
That which has been filled describes believers. This is what you get the fullness of life and the fullness of power to overcome. It describes believers that have been filled with the presence, power, riches of God through Christ's abundance. I love it. See, when we're full of the love of God, we can't be full of depression at the same time or anger, or pride, or anxiety, or confusion, or bondage, or fear, or, conf or addiction, or sin, or hate. Either you're full of hate, or full of unforgiveness, or full of bitterness, or full of depression, and this is the idea, you're not full of the love of Jesus yet. It's getting quiet up in here because we're breaking it down. <laughs> Truth number three. All that remain in the love of Jesus are filled with the joy of Jesus. This is super cool. So when I have the love of Jesus and I'm filled with the love of Jesus and I remain in the love of Jesus and I continue to love, this is the byproduct, you'll also be filled with joy. When you're full of love, you're full of joy. Well, I'm not full of joy. You ain't full of love. You're full of something else. I didn't say nothing, so don't we try filling the blanks. John 15, 9, look what it says this. I have loved you. I have loved you. This is Jesus. I've lo I loved you. I loved you. I, I, it's not I'm, I'm going to love you. I already loved you. I'm loving you, but I already loved you. Even as my fathers loved me. Remain in my love. What did he say? Remain in what? You have to, like, stay there. And you're going to have to say it over yourself. Maybe right now, you say, man, just, I'm receiving this. G God loves me. Jesus loves me. Say it with me. Jesus loves me. I'm convinced that God loves me. He said, I don't feel it. You're not supposed to feel it. Say it. Give access for God's love to come in. Because understand, every time you're saying, no one loves me, no one cares about me, everybody hates me, I don't fit in anywhere, I've been abused my whole life. I'm not saying that, that you weren't abused. All I'm saying, saying those things does not help you overcome. All it does is, is fortify, it fortify your defeat, it fortify your condition. Look at this. Remain in my love. When you obey all my commands, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in His love. Look at this. I've told you these things about my love, to remain in my love, so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I'm telling you to remain in my love, and I'm commanding you to love me and to love people and to love your enemies so that my joy may be in you and that my, your joy will overflow. Someone say overflow. overflow. Is it possible to be overflowing with joy? Look at me. Is it possible? <laughs> you know why I'm telling you that? Because there's a devil just fighting your mind right now. You know what's happening right now? The depression, anxiety, fear, loneliness, unworthiness is speaking to you. And it's trying to stop you from receiving the love of Jesus. I come against that spirit that's trying to block the love of Jesus. I come against the spirit of doubt that's trying to stop people from not believing that God loves them. I come against the spirit of anger and unforgiveness. Let it go so God's love can flow. I'm a rapper. Let it go so God's love can flow, yo. All right, there we go. So when I remain in love, I will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. You don't have a depression problem. You don't have an anxiety problem. You don't have an anger problem. You got a love deficiency. All right, come on. That's just... Drop the mic. <laughs> Truth number four. The only way to be filled with the love of Jesus is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a trip here. And the reason that we didn't get into, like, overcoming fear yet, because I wanted to give you the foundation of overcoming everything. 
And the foundation of overcoming everything is your relation, loving relationship with God, not religion. Religion gives you rules. Jesus came to give you relationship. And you know the two commands that he's commanded you to do is to love God with everything you got and love your neighbors. You love yourself. He goes, if you do that, my joy is going to be in you and your joy is going to overflow. Not your anger is going to overflow. Not your sarcasm is going to overflow. Not your addiction is going to overflow. Not your cussing is going to overflow. But what's going to overflow is what your heart's filled with love and joy. People that are full of love are full of joy. That's why Christians should be the most joyful people on earth. People are looking for a joy in a high. They're looking for a, jo a joy in a Budweiser. They're looking for a joy in a relationship. They're looking for joy in a sexual identity. They're looking for a joy in all these things. And I'm telling you, you're going to still be depressed. There's only one that can give you joy. There's only one that can fill your heart with love. And it's through the power of the Holy Spirit. We receive, now I want you to get this. The gift of the Holy Spirit through repenting of our sins and believing in Jesus. Now, God only fills empty cups. That, what I mean by that is if you're full of anger, you're full of lust, you're full of rebellion, you're full of pride, you're full of gang banging, you're full of whatever you're full love of money, until you repent of that and turn away from that and allow God to forgive you and empty you, he can't fill you with the love. Look what it says here in Acts 2.38. Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We, I want you to get this. This is what God's offering you. A relationship with him. And he's offering you to make you a brand new person, a person you never were. He's offering you a gift. And the gift is his spirit. The spirit of Jesus, the spirit of God, Almighty God wants to come inside of you to transform your heart, empower you to overcome, and fill you with his love. That's called being born again. Born again is not a religion. Some of us claim religion, but you have no relationship with God. Well, I'm Jehovah's Witness, or I'm Catholic, or I'm, I, you know, I, I go to the way. And it's so? You could be going to the way and have a relationship with God. What makes you saved is when the power of the God Spirit goes inside of you. And when the Spirit of God goes inside of you, it changes you. Changes your thinking, changes your desires, changes, come on, your ability, come on, changes your outlook. It changes everything. How do we know you have the Holy Spirit? When you have the Holy Spirit, you're more loving. I think I'm saved. I can't tell. Because you're so angry. You're so mean. You're so inconsistent. You're so, I want you guys, you're so weak. This is what I'm saying. God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. I know you're weak, but that's why we have Jesus. That's why God's given us his spirit. So we can overcome whatever our weaknesses are. Come on, you can overcome every single thing through the love of Jesus. God doesn't want to tweak you. He wants to transform you. Well, you know, if I give my life to Jesus, I'm just going to have to white knuckle this whole thing. It's going to be hard. It's not hard. 
It's hard liver for the devil with all that depression, all that anxiety, all that hopelessness, come on, all that pain, and you, have, come on, you haven't released it. You need the Holy Spirit. When we repent of our sins, so I'm telling you, you're going to have to let go of your sin to receive what God has. Some of you have more faith in your alcohol than you do in your God. And you're addicted. Because you've been using alcohol for so long to numb your pain. But you're not free. Look at this. Got quiet in there. A lot of alcoholics. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's keep going. We got hoochies and alcoholics. I mean, I gonna... <laughs> you guys are crazy. You guys are crazy. Stop it. You guys are making me do this. No, I'm just kidding. It's your fault now. Right, let's keep going. The Holy Spirit fills our hearts with the overcoming love of God. So when you're full of the Holy Spirit, you're full of the love of God. Look at Romans 5, 5. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. Someone say, God loves me, loves me dearly. Like, he really loves me. You got to, like, maybe wake up in the morning and say, God, you love me so much. And then say this, I love you too. Maybe you need to start confessing some good stuff over yourself. Stop waiting for someone to tell you they love you. God's already told you I dearly love you. Why don't you confess the one that loves you and stop looking for love in all the wrong places. That's a country song right there. Looking for love in all the wrong places. I got that one right. For we know how dearly God loves us. Someone say, I know. Are, do you know that? Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. To fill our hearts with his overcoming love. Come on. To fill our hearts with his generosity. To fill our hearts. Come on. With his help. To fill our hearts with his strength. To fill our hearts with his joy. To fill our hearts with his peace. God is saying, I am the cure. And the last thing. The Holy Spirit. Someone say Holy Spirit. Produces the love, joy, and peace of God. Look what it says. When you have the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5.22, do you know why Christians, even Christians, some Christians are still struggling with the spirit of suicide? Because you're unaware that God loves you. And, and because you don't know that God loves you, you see yourself as invaluable. And when you don't believe that God loves you, this is what happens. The spirit of the devil speaks to you. He causes you to, in, to fantasize about ending it, cutting yourself, hurting yourself, hurting others. And there's a problem, and there's one big problem. You don't know how much God loves you. Because once you know how much God loves you, you're going to see that you're valuable. And then once you know that God loves you, you're going to see that people are valuable. Once you know that God loves you, there's going to be a joy that takes place of that depression. The love of God is going to cast out the demon. Someone tonight's going to receive the love of Jesus, and God is saying, stop trying to do it on your own. Stop trying to overcome through your willpower. Come on, I'm not giving you three steps to overcome. I'm giving you one name to call on to overcome, and it's the name of Jesus. And if you call on Jesus, he'll fill you with his spirit. Galatians 5, 22, we're done. But the Holy Spirit, say with this. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. It's awesome. He goes, when you're full of the Holy Spirit, he goes, I produce this. If the Holy Spirit's producing this in your heart, love, joy, peace, you don't need to get high no more. You're done. You don't need to be depressed anymore. 
All I'm saying is stop quoting your depression and start quoting Scripture. Amen. Come on. How many want to be filled with the love of Jesus today? There's one way you're going to have to repent of your sins. There was a time my heart was full of jealousy and craziness. And it was stopping me from loving Lisa before we got married. It was not making me loving. It wasn't, I had no peace. I had no joy. I was suffering. Jealousy took over my heart. And because it took over my heart, it took over my words. It took over my attitudes. It took over my emotions. It made me angry. It made me desperate. And I always thought, if I, if I just ask this question and she answers it right, all the jealousy will go. I'll say, okay, just one question. Lisa, just one question. A question is stupid like this. Did he ever really love anyone else but me? And she goes, no. You're lying the way you said it. I... That just kept going. And some of you think one more round of the craziness is going to heal you, make you complete, make you whole. Some of, some of us have been fantasizing about a drug and, or an escape or an adulterous relationship or whatever you've been fantasizing about is sin. And you really think that sin is going to make you complete, whole, satisfy you and give you joy and peace. It's going to rip you off. Because you don't have an identity that God loves you and you don't see yourself as a child of God to have a loving father, you're looking for your identity still. And that's the crisis of today. We do not know who we are. We're stuck right now. We're, there's, there, you know, we don't know. I, I don't know if I'm a boy or a girl. That's what that we're, we're turning into. And the idea is the reason is you're saying that because I don't feel comfortable. And I'm telling you, that's normal. It's normal not to feel comfortable without Jesus' love. Today's your day. I'm telling you, I pray that you'll experience the love of Jesus. Because if you experience the love of Jesus, you, then you'll be filled. You'll be complete and filled with the fullness of the life of God and the power of God. And you're going to overcome every single thing. And God's going to help you overcome, help others overcome. You're going to find your purpose. Today's your day. You say, Pastor, that's me. I need a new start today. And I want to repent of my sins and allow God to forgive me and empty me of every wrong I've done so he could fill me with his love. I want to let go of my depression today, the anxiety today, the fear today, the suicidal thoughts, everything that I've tried to use to fulfill me and make me whole. I want to be done with it, but I can't overcome it without the love of Jesus. But if you're telling me that the love of Jesus helped me overcome everything, I want that love in me. This is what God is saying. When I fill you with my love, you're going to love me more than you love your sin. And that's what's going to keep you from it. Amen. Come on. You don't have a willpower problem. You have a love problem. If you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I want to be forgiven. I want my heart filled with love. Or number two, like my heart's full of depression, anger, fear, anxiety. I'm, I'm struggling. But I want to overcome today. I want God's love to come in and kick out every demon. Heal my broken heart. Heal my emotions. Heal my mind. Heal my chemistry. God will heal it all. I mean, I understand that. If you're saying that's me, Pastor, I don't know if I'm right with God. I want to get right with God. Understand this. If you don't develop a loving relationship with God now, if you die like that without a relationship with Jesus, you'll never have a relationship with Jesus in eternity. It just won't happen. The relationship you have with Jesus is the one you're leaving here this earth with. If you don't have one, understand this. Things will not get better on the other side. They're going to get worse. You're going to be separated from God and hope for the rest of your life. Right now, the depression, the anxiety, the fear, the anger, the trouble, the experiences you're going through that keep like their cycles and they don't stop, is just letting you know you're on the wrong track. You're on the wrong road. And God says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Come to me. I'm the road you've been looking for. It's my love. So when we're saying give your life to Jesus, this is what you're saying. We're saying surrender your heart to love. God's love. Are you ready? When I count the three, Pastor, that's me. 
I need a new start. I need a new beginning. I need Jesus to set me free to overcome what I'm facing right now. I didn't maybe didn't mention what you're facing, but you can overcome it. You're facing something that's overwhelming you. It's depressing you and it makes you feel hopeless. And you said, I need to overcome that too. One, does your, uh, I want to say three real quick. One, and when I say three, raise your hand. Say, I'm, that's me. I'm ready to let it go. I want to overcome. I want to be set free. I want my heart full of love. I'm ready to go, let go of the anger. I'm letting it go, let go of all of it. Two, and when I say three, raise your hand. Three, raise your hands all over. Come on. This is your moment to act on it. Uh, everyone to raise your hands, just stand up real quick. Stand up. And if you raise your hand, stand up, stand up. Everybody stand up. Just everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. If you right now are struggling with something you need to overcome, come forward right now. Just come forward. It could be an addiction. It could be depression. It could be anger. It could be alcoholism. It could be a lust. It could be pornography. I don't know. Whatever it is that you need to overcome, it could be you're in a tough situation. You don't feel loved. You feel unworthy. You feel like no one cares about you. You have to overcome the past the hurt you've gone through, the abuse you went through. You feel like a failure, you've messed up. I got some good news for you that Jesus is gonna help you overcome. You are not your failure. You are not your past. You are not your struggle. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand, come on. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you know who gets breakthrough? Proud of you. You know who gets breakthrough? Who overcomes? Those that ask for. Come on. Those that desire. Those that believe. If you believe, you take action. If you believe, you take action. Don't leave this room with a spirit of suicide. Don't leave this room with confusion in your mind. Don't leave this room. Come on. Give your life to Jesus. Come on. They're still coming. Hallelujah. Man, I'm trusting in this, in the love of God for you. And Jesus said, you might have still coming. Jesus said, if you ask me for bread or something good, I'm not going to give you a snake. And he was talking about, I want to give you my Holy Spirit. How do you know you're saved? Your faith is not in a religion. Your faith is in a relationship. You open your heart and receive Jesus into your heart and receive his spirit. I'm not here to change your behavior. And God doesn't want to change your behavior. He wants to change your heart and life. This is not behavior modification. This is life transformation. The Bible says when you give your life to Jesus, old things pass away and everything becomes brand new. That means you become a brand new person. Somebody you never were. I said again, someone you never were. And you become a new person because a major thing happened. God's spirit went inside of you. But not only did God's spirit go inside of you, and live in you, and you live in him. He fills your heart with love, but also he wants to drive out everything that's tormenting you. Let's believe that today is your day that drive that God's love will drive out what you couldn't drive out. And I know you've been trying. And because you have failed so many times, you almost gave up, but you did it. You're here. I'm proud of you. And the enemy wants to drive all the mistakes you've made, but I'll just tell you this, we all make mistakes. Ain't nobody here like, I'm, I did it, I'm the one. I'm like Jesus, 100%, never made mistakes. And we say, come here, let's cast the demon of lying out of you. Right, because the truth is we all do, we all have. But you are not your mistake and you are not your weakness and you are not your sin. Stop making your sin your identity. Jesus came to transform you. That's why, you know, I, like, um, like Alcoholics Anonymous, it helps you to give you steps, but, I, but, but, I, but I'm, I'm a little, I don't like this part about it, that you constantly say you're an alcoholic. I want you to be able to say, I used to be alcoholic, but Jesus set me free. 
Come on. I, I used to be. I'm not. I am free because who the Son says free is free indeed. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Some of you, gonna, we're going to end it here, but, but some of you are in a cycle, an anger cycle. You have relationship problems everywhere you go. And the reason you have relationship problems everywhere you go and it feels like everybody turns against me, it's always the same thing everywhere I go. There's a reason for that. Your heart has unforgiveness in it. And you've not let it go. And when your heart has unforgiveness in it, it, it causes your, all your relationships not to work. Because the anger comes out. The sarcasm comes out. The blaming comes out. The accusations come out. And before you know it, everybody's a witch. Right? And, you, and you're just stuck there. God wants you to love. And you know how you know you're full of love? You start loving people you used to hate. I don't know how I love you, but it's some in me. Amen. Are you ready? Come on. Some of you can't love yourself because someone hurt you and you hold on, you held on to the unforgiveness and the anger and it caught, it backfired on you, literally turned on you. And the same hate you had for them, you have now for yourself. And you, how do I get to this point where I hate myself? How do I, how do I get to the point where I don't value myself anymore? What happened? And it happened. They hurt you. You never forgave them. And love stopped. And this is what happened. Your dream stopped. Your value stopped. And then you started medicating. With people, with sex, with money, with hustles, with position, drugs, drinking, whatever, whatever it is. We're done. Are you guys ready? Come on. I'm trusting in the Holy Spirit. The reason I'm talking to you, you matter to me, you matter to God. Are you ready to repent of your sins? I'm telling you, you can't get the Holy Spirit if you want to hold on to your sin. And there's a problem, and there's a problem with, with pastors and churches out there. We're loving people so much, in a sense, loving them the wrong way. We're telling them God loves you just the way you are. We know that God loves you, but he can't fill you with his spirit until you're willing to repent of your sins. Come on, nothing's going to change until you repent. You got to repent of your drug. Come on, you got to repent of your sexual morality. Come on, you got you got to repent of your uh, your se sexual identity, be your homosexuality, your lesbianism, your anger, your hate, your gang banging, all that. You got to repent of. And if you're not willing to turn from that, this is what's going to happen. I'm just telling you, you haven't opened your heart. And if you don't open your heart, God cannot fill you with His love and what you've been looking for. Okay. I love you guys. I'm not trying to hurt nobody. I'm just, if I love you and I know how to get you to the point where you have love, joy, wholeness, why would I lie to you? I love you. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Bow your heads right now. You're going to speak to God and you don't have to beg because God wants to touch you. He loves you and he's so deeply concerned about you. You don't have to say, here I am, Lord. God says, I see you. I've been looking at you. I love you so much. I'm so glad you came today. I've seen your pain. I've seen your depression. I've seen your addiction. I've seen, I've seen the thoughts, the sleepless nights, the insomnia, the struggle, the abuse you've been going through, the, the unworthiness. The, it just doesn't stop. I've seen it. And I've just been waiting for you to call on me. I see the demonization. I see the struggle. I see the suicidal thoughts. I see it all. I love you. Call on me. I'll save you. Say this, Jesus. I know. I believe that you love me. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Forgive me, Lord, for all my sins. I'm done doing it my way trying to self-medicate, trying to fill the empty spot in my heart. The more I do it, the emptier I feel. I'm done. Set me free from depression, fear, anxiety, addiction, anger, unforgiveness. And fill me now, Lord with your love, with your Holy Spirit. Make me a new person. 
drive out everything that doesn't come from you. I accept you, Lord, as my loving Father. Jesus, thank you for suffering so I could be healed and dying so I could live and resurrecting so I could have a new life. Thank you, Jesus. I, I receive your forgiveness and your love. And I forgive everybody that has hurt me. And I choose to love them too. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Fill them with your spirit, Lord, and your power. Now, God bless you guys. Next week, stay right here, everybody here. But next week, we're going to be talking about overcoming fear. Five sessions. Session number one, love. Next session, how to overcome fear. Sunday morning, we're going to be talking about the end times. And we're going to talk about the rapture. We're going to talk about Jesus coming back. Are we in the end times? You don't want to miss it. That's Sunday. But I want you to right now, also, everyone that's here, if you've not been baptized, sign them up for baptism this Sunday, re re representing your old life being buried and living a new life for Christ. I need some help up here. I need some prayer warriors up here. Come on. We got we got a lot of people here that need prayer. They need a breakthrough. They need to experience the love of Jesus through you. Your touch, your prayer, your concern. Come on, church. We need some leaders here. Working, touching, loving. 